ETCO2 capnography, which is the monitoring of concentration or partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the respiratory gases. This technology is recognized as the gold standard for confirmation of endotracheal tube placement by the American Heart Association and also mandated by the county MPD. For all advanced airway placements, the county MPD has mandated documentation of intile CO2 values and waveforms. Paramedics will utilize entitled CO2 100% of the time in all advanced airway management methods. These include endotracheal intubation, cricothyrotomy, ventilator use, Entitled CO2 value will be recorded in the patient care report every time the patient is moved or the device is reassessed. Entitled CO2 waveforms will be recorded after initial placement and as close to the time of transfer to either a transport crew or the ED staff as possible 100% of the time. If for some reason entitled CO2 was not applied to a patient receiving an advanced airway, you must document why on the PCR and provide an incident report to your EMS officer or the MPD. Waveform capnography is the standard in Clark County for confirming tube placement. We are going to take a few minutes to review on how to prepare your equipment needed to monitor your patient's entitled CO2. The first step is to ensure that you have the filter lines readily available. You should have a minimum of each type of filter line in your LifePak 12 at all times. You can also tape an ET tube to a filter line for easy access and to remind you of its application. When using a nasal filter line, it is imperative to apply it correctly to avoid erroneous readings. Monitoring entitled CO2 with a filter line while administering oxygen via non-rebreather mask will not cause erroneous readings. To use a nasal filter line, remove it from its package and place it on the patient. Attach the orange fitting at the distal end of the tube and insert it into the port located on the LifePak 12. Secure the fitting by turning it clockwise until snug, but do not over tighten. You will now be able to monitor the patient's entitled CO2 waveform and obtain a carbon dioxide reading. When using the ET tube device, it is recommended that you have several filter lines available. Because if a significant amount of fluid comes up the ET tube into your filter line, it may cause the filter line to fail and monitor CO2. To use the end tidal CO2 for ET tube, attach the orange filter into the LifePak 12 while intubation is being attempted. After the ET tube has been inserted, attach the filter line to the ET tube end and ventilate the patient. A quantitative measure of CO2 in the presence of a waveform on the LifePak 12 display is confirmation of correct tube placement. Selecting a waveform in the LifePak 12. Dashed lines appear on the LifePak 12 monitor because no channel has been selected to display a waveform. To do this, use the selector knob to select a channel, select it, Go to Waveform, select Waveform, scroll down to CO2, select it, and then hit the Home key. Now, your channel has been dedicated to CO2 Waveform. Attaching an entitled CO2 filter line to the LifePak 12. When the LifePak 12 is first turned on, dash lines appear and no module is highlighted that is not being used. Here, the entitled CO2 module is blank until the filter line is attached and activates the module to come on.
Now you'll notice that a value will appear in the entitled CO2 module area, but no waveforms exist. This is because the waveform has not been assigned to a display channel. To do so, scroll the selector knob until either channels 2 or 3 is highlighted on the monitor screen. Push the selector knob and scroll to waveform. Then scroll to the wave you want. Here we select CO2. We are going to continue with some troubleshooting solutions when a value or a waveform is not obtained. Here we are going to intentionally loosen the filter link connection at the LifePak 12. Notice that the monitor identified the problem. Always check this connection to make sure it is snug. The next troubleshooting tip is to blow into the filter line if you are ever unsure that the entitled CO2 module is not functioning properly. There are times when a filter line may be affected by moisture or fluid such as emesis. When this occurs, the monitor will identify the problem, most likely immediately, as either a filter line purge or blockage. When this happens, remove the filter line and replace it. Do not attempt to reuse it. If in tidal CO2 values are consistently lower than expected, check the in tidal CO2 exhaust port located behind the monitor between the batteries. This could be blocked, fouled, or obstructed. When CO2 is not detected in the cardiac arrest situation, either dashes or a flat solid line at or near zero occur, several factors must be quickly evaluated. Always check the connection at the endotracheal tube and at the LifePak 12 monitor. A shock was delivered and the system is resetting. This could take up to 20 seconds. The system is auto zeroing. Also, this could take up to 20 seconds. A loss of airway function, including improper placement of the ET tube, ET tube dislodgement, ET tube obstruction. Always check your tube. Physiological factors include apnea, massive PE, loss of perfusion, inadequate CPR, or exanguation. The new county protocol for RSI intubation now states, upon successful intubation, confirm ET tube placement by capnography and secure.